Rita, her daughter. I want to share a poem with you that Mom wrote. Memories, oh how sweet they are, woven with golden threads of love that never fade. And though from home and friends we journey far, we'll always treasure memories that life has made. They are ours, and no one can steal or take away the treasured memories of things we hold so dear. My darlings, as life unfolds the newness of each day, there will always be memories to keep us ever near. It was signed, your wife, your mom, your boom boo. This is a little verse I love to tell my mom from time to time. It was my favorite thing to say to her, and she always loved it when I would talk to her about this and say this verse. Once upon a memory, someone wiped away a tear, held me close, and loved me. Oh, thank you, sweet, sweet, sweet mother dear. Mother was the darling of our family. And she left with us beautiful memories and such a rich, rich heritage. She was such a godly missionary mother. And she was, as we've all said before, such a prayer warrior. She daily called out our 22 names in prayer and asked the Lord to guide us and direct us and make us a blessing to those that we would come in contact with. And just wanted to share a little bit with you as mom. Actually, she fractured her back in two places on this past Saturday. Mm -hmm. And Grant and I spent the day with her in the ER. And there were times she was in incredible pain, but she was still our sweet mom. Sweet to the very end. And when I came in the room, she said, you know, I just don't understand what, what I'm going through all these things. But then there were times during the day she would be laying on her bed and she'd lift her hands and she'd say, oh Jesus, just come please take me home. And we got her back to the lodge and um, I'll never forget my last little conversation with mom. She was heavily on pain medicine, but the nurse was sitting on the bed with her and she was sitting there eating her dinner, eating a little bit of cheesecake before she finished the first part of her dinner. <laughs> and she was so darling, she was so sweet, just on the side of the bed with her little sweet feet dangling over the edge. And the last thing I got to do with her, I got to pray with her and give her her kiss and tell her good night. And then I went home, by then it was evening, and uh, the next day after church, we were going to go by to see her, but we got a call and, and the nurse said, you need to come quickly, mom is on her way. And the most incredible thing happened that afternoon because there were only four of the family in town that day, and it was our son Cameron, and daughter-in-law, Kayla, and they came up right over as well, and then Grant and myself. And Boo Boo had her eyes closed in bed. She was very, very weak. And we, all, each one of us, told her our goodbyes, crying like faucets. And she would barely, with much effort, uh, say, real softly, I love you, and she mentioned each one by name. And then we started the phone calls all the way to the Tongan Islands where my niece lives with her family and children. And I had the privilege of hearing every goodbye because I would hold the phone up to her ear. She was so weak, but she would whisper her I love you by name to each one as she said goodbye, and those just those three words. And then each grandchild was called and we put the phone up to her ear. And it was so incredible. The grandchildren didn't know what each other was going to say because they were in different parts of the country. But 
every single one came back to the same theme about mom. How mom, a uh, uh, boo boo, was, that's boo boo, which means grandmother in Fijian. And they each said, boo boo, we just love you, love you so much, and you've been an incredible uh, person in our lives, and your example of loving Christ has meant so much to us. Your prayers have followed us all our lives, and we want you to know, Boom Boo, we're all going to see you in heaven. So all 22 of us are going to be there. And, and there were times when a grandchild would be on the phone, and as weak as mom was, her eyes would fly open. I could tell she was intently listening to them. It meant so much to her to know every one of us would be there to, to see mom and dad in heaven again. And then, by Monday, she wasn't able to speak at all. And I had spent the night with her Sunday night. It was such a privilege for me to have been her caregiver these last few months when she had gone through so much suffering. And I held her hand through the night. And then, by 3 o'clock, Monday afternoon, she took her final flight home to heaven, which is where she wanted to go. I just want to tell you, my mother was not only beautiful on the outside, she was just as beautiful inside, the sweetest of ladies. She was soft and gentle, kind and sweet, graceful and full of grace, comforting and loving. In her book, as Brother Turney has already mentioned, her book, I have to tell you, the book's name is Treasured Memories. And now that she's gone, I treasure this book so much, and I've been reading it again this week while she's been gone, and I felt my mother speaking right to me off the pages of the book. And part of the book in the very beginning was talking about her growing up days. And it, it, I, I was so moved because now reading the book after mom is gone, it's like she's speaking to me from what it's really what she was looking forward to about heaven, but what she's now experiencing. And in the book, she talks about her brother, who was uh, 14 years older than her. And uh, her family came into Pentecost when my mom was three, but her brother was 17. And he did not embrace the Lord at that age. And her mother and father, my mom being the youngest and still at home, they always prayed fervently for Arnold. My uh, uncle's name was Arnold. And one evening, one Sunday evening, after my mother came home from church, she sat down by Arnold uh, next to him on the couch and led him to the Lord. I just want to back up and say Arnold had lived in Minneapolis, and he uh, had a severe spinal injury. And the doctor said someday he would probably be handicapped, and he had several problems from it. But actually, a week after my mom led him to the Lord, he came down with encephalitis and was bedridden, and the following Sunday lapsed into a coma. At church, prayer was offered for him, and we carried home an anointed handkerchief at his bedside. He was not conscious of our presence. But as we prayed and laid the handkerchief on his forehead, he gave a sweet smile. A few days later, early in the morning, Mother awakened me. Yvonne, she said with tears, Arnold is going to be leaving us this morning. We gathered around his bedside, feeling the presence of the Lord, as Arnold took his eternal flight. My saintly grandmother, who lived in the country, awakened early that morning, and the Lord confirmed to her he had taken Arnold away. He was only 32 years old. And this next paragraph really spoke to my heart about my mother in heaven. She says in her book, one day I'll take that journey too, and I'll look for my big brother. And when I see him coming over the hilltop, I'll run to meet him. Maybe I'll feel like his little sister again. I think he'll take my hand in his, just like he used to, and together we'll walk the streets of gold. I get to see my mom up there with Arnold and my father and all 
the loved ones. 